So let's do this definite integral. And along the way, I'm going to transform the limits so that we just have a theta integral all the way to the end of the problem. And we won't have to transform in terms of x because we're just getting basically a number out of this. So I have a, a 1 minus x squared. And I'm trying to match this up with one of the Pythagorean identities. And basically, again, you have a choice between two identities that you're going to exploit. It's either that one or this one. And here I see a constant minus a variable thing squared, which is what I, it's something I could get out of this first identity. So I'm going to write cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. That's a constant minus a variable thing squared. So that fits the form of my integral. So I'm going to say let x equals sine theta. Then 1 minus x squared, that's just going to be 1 minus sine squared. That'll simplify to a cosine squared, and then I can apply this fractional power. I also have to transform the differential. That's cosine theta d theta. And I also want to transform the limits of integration. So when x is equal to negative 1, I have negative 1 equals sine theta. So I need the angle that gives me a sine equal to negative 1, and that's negative pi over 2. x equals positive 1, that means 1 equals sine theta. What angle gives me a sine equal to 1, and that's pi over 2. So these limits transform to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So let's rewrite the integral inside those parentheses is now a 1 minus sine squared dx is cosine theta d theta um, incidentally you could have recognized from the beginning that this is an even function and said that this is equal to twice the integral from 0 to 1. Uh, it saves a little bit of work at the end, but I think I missed my opportunity to do that. All right, so this is actually cosine squared to the 3 halves, cosine theta d theta. And things are going to get real ugly now. I put this one in here because um, it involves the half angle identities. So the square root of the cosine squared, that's just cosine, and then I raise it to the third power. That's what the three halves mean. So I have cosine cubed times cosine, which gives me cosine to the fourth. And when you're stuck with an even power of sine or an even power of cosine, you're going to end up using the half angle identities. So what I'm talking about is this one. But these identities are so valuable. We really use them all the time in, uh, in calculus and physics. Uh, what I'm going for is the first one. And in order to take, to take advantage of this, I need to split my cosine to the fourth into cosine squared multiplied by cosine squared. And I'm going to apply that identity to each one of them. All right, so that gives me a 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2 theta. So that's going to be a fourth, just factoring out those constants. 1 plus cosine 2 theta multiplied by itself. And then I'm going to expand that. And I get a 1 plus 2 cosine 2 theta. Those, that's the cross terms. And then a cosine squared 2 theta d theta. 
And so on this one, I need to apply that half angle identity again to knock down the power of the cosine function there. So I have 1 fourth integral negative pi over 2 to 2. Pi over 2 to pi over 2. All right. 1 plus 2 cosine 2 theta plus 1 half times 1 plus cosine of twice this angle, which is 4 theta. All right, I could divide each of these terms by 1 half and multiply by 1 half out in front. Just trying to get rid of that fraction. So I end up with a 2 plus 4 cosine 2 theta plus a 1 plus cosine 4 theta d theta. And that's a lot of writing to just make a whole new line just to turn 2 plus 1 into 3. So let's just see that as a 3. And we're ready to, to integrate. So I have 1 eighth. And the integral of 3, so that just gives me 3 theta. And then I have a 4 antiderivative of cosine 2 theta. So that's going to be sine 2 theta, but I have to divide by 2. 1 half sine 2 theta. Um, and just sort of guessing and checking real quick. Like if I differentiate sine 2 theta, I get cosine 2 theta times 2 because of the chain rule. That's why I had to put the 1 half there. And then finally, the cosine 4 theta term. That gives me a 1 fourth. sine 4 theta. And I'm evaluating all that from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if I look at the upper limit, you know what, I can't, I can't stand the inefficiency of this. So um, again, this is an even integral. So I could, all the way back here, just say let's take twice the integral from 0 to pi over 2. I have an even function integrated on an interval symmetric about the origin, so I'm allowed to do it this way. Uh, that's going to save me half the work here, and I really would like to do that. So I'm going to multiply by a 2 out in front and just evaluate from 0 to pi over 2. So that 2 over 8 reduces to 1 fourth. Plugging in the upper limit, I end up with 3 times pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. And then when I plug in pi over 2, to this, I end up with 2 times pi over 2, which is pi, but the sine of pi is 0, so that one vanishes. And then the sine of 4 times pi over 2, well, the sine of 2 pi is 0, so that one vanishes. So it looks like the whole thing comes out to 3 pi over 8.